my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in great pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness.
about the Lord and what He's already already done for you. It makes me want to give Him all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It makes me just want to shout. Thank you, Jesus. chapter 6 in the Old Testament the book is Daniel the chapter 6 we'll be looking at verses 18 through 23 Daniel chapter 6 verses 18 through 23 I've been waiting on this pericope and I'm sure you have also one of the great stories of our biblical day. Daniel chapter 6, verses 18 through 23. When you found it, you will discover these words. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. No musicians were brought before him. Also his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke saying, Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continuously been able to deliver you from the lions? Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. And also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury whatsoever was found on him because he believed in his God. All right. I want to talk about believing God in the lion's den. All right. All right. Believing God in the lion's den. Believing God in the lion's den. You may be one today that's going through something. Yes, yes. 
you may be able to identify with Daniel today that you have been or you are in the midst of a lion's den. You see, because the lion's den is not just the location. It is a condition. The lion's den is a state of mind. The lion's den is a circumstance. You see, being in the lion's den today is much like being in the lion's den in Daniel's day. Being in that den is not just a location. Songwriter wrote a song when I was young. He says, your body is here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. It wasn't a church song, but some of you in this room can identify that you don't have to be where you are and have your mind set on where you are. The songwriter was saying to this particular woman, he was saying, now I know you got something else going on. I can tell from your mannerism, I can tell from your body language, even though you're sitting here talking to me, even though you're at this location, your body is here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. Oftentimes, I believe on Sunday morning, on Wednesday night, <laughs> your body may be here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. You see, sometimes we are bothered by stuff deep down in our spirits that we have refused to tell anybody about. There's stuff that's going on that's bothering us, that's, that's yeah. aching us, and yeah. that's taunting us, that's always going on around us. Yeah. I tell you, even though you're in a lion's den, believe God. Mm -hmm. Daniel did that. Daniel believed God in the midst of the lion's den. King Darius is on the throne. King Darius has allowed Daniel to gain favor with him. Let me just pause right here and tell you that regardless of where you go, if you have favor with God, God can give you favor with mankind. Regardless, regardless of your personality, regardless of your color, regardless of, of who you were born to and what you were born with, God has a way of giving his children favor regardless of where they go. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, they, they ask me, how did you feel being a token? How did you feel being the only one? How did you feel the only person that made it of your color to, to that particular situation? I said, I feel favored of God. Because God can give you favor when your, your personality is not intact. God can give you favor when you were born in the ghetto. He can bring you to the big city and still give you favor. God can give you favor even though you don't have all the skills necessary that's on the description of the job. God can give you favor where you can make it anyhow. Such it is with Daniel. Daniel has favor with King Darius. But let me tell you that Daniel didn't walk up and have favor just like that just because he was Daniel. Daniel has served several kings and now he's on this king and Daniel has, has relationship with God. Let me tell you, you need to have not only a relationship with God in order to have the favor of God, but you need to have fellowship with God. That means God knows you and you know God. That means that you spend your time around God. You have you hang out with God. You hang out more with God than you do your cronies. Then you do your buddies. Then you do your friends. Then you do your family members. You ought to have some quiet time along with God. Daniel spent his quiet time along with God. He, he spent his time along with God up in the upper room. He spent his time alone with God with his window up when he prayed. 
Daniel spent his time, quiet time alone with God with his windows up his face face in Jerusalem. You see, you never go down to Jerusalem. You always go up to Jerusalem because the Jerusalem represented the place of God. Jerusalem represents the place of worship. Jerusalem represents the place where we got along with God. Let me tell you, you need a place in your house, you need a place in your car, you need a place in your neighborhood where you can get along with God. Daniel had built a custom. He had built a reputation of getting along with God. The, the thing you need to understand is that Daniel's character put him in that position. Yeah. Daniel didn't walk along, along, uh, around mad all the time just because he was in captivity. Hmm. Daniel did not have a personality that before you get to him, you can see that they're mad already. Daniel did not complain. Daniel did not, did not call upon these idol gods. He didn't blend in with those who worship idols. Daniel just kept on worshiping the God, the living and the true God himself. I just want to let you know that you ought not change your worship just because a decree takes place. You, you, not, you ought not change your worship. You need to stick to the way you worship God. Not only should you stick to the way you worship him, you need to stick to the same God that you've been worshiping. Yes, okay. if, if Big Daddy was here, he'd tell you like this. He would, he would say to you, he would say, boy, take the same bridge that brought you over to get you through. If it was God that brought you this far, you better stick with that God. Because it's the same God who has brought you over that's going to keep you. You know, we get education. We get sheep skins on our wall. We, we, we get lamb skin on our wall. We, we get ink on the wall. And we think we have arrived and we don't need God anymore. Daniel suggests to us today that we need to stick with the same God. Not only does he gives us a, a, a synopsis of how we need to stick with the same God, he also emphasizes to us that we need to stick with the same friends. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, whenever somebody hit the lotto, mm -hmm. they got kinfolk that come out the woodwork. Right. <laughs> when, whenever somebody is prosperous and, and God really blessed somebody, and he can bless you other than through the lotto, See, because God, the God we serve, knows how to bless us, and, and he blesses us in things seen and unseen. Right. If you got a right mind this morning, and you can reason for yourself, God has truly blessed you. Right. And if you fed yourself this morning, if you drove yourself this morning, if you put one leg in front of the other this morning, God has blessed you, and you need to serve that God. Right. Right. Daniel, Daniel. Open up the windows. He said his prayer only using rotation three times a day. If God could get us to pray just once a day, <laughs> this world would be different. If God can get us to come to him, walk with him, fellowship with him, call upon him just once a day, then that would be a big improvement. But Daniel Pray to his God, the true and the living God, three times a day. And he went to the same spot to pray. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter how busy you get. doesn't matter how many things bombard you during the day. You better, t better find some time alone with God. All right. You know, early in the morning is a good time to spend with God before everybody get up. One morning I decided that I was going to answer a phone call. And it was a rat race the rest of the day. But if you spend quality time alone with God, he can tell you as you move through your day, don't turn that way, don't go that way. He'll show you what pitfalls are before you, and he will show you what ditches have been done for you. But you have to spend quality time with God. Daniel spent quality time with God. Another thing is Daniel's character was distinguished. When you look at verses 3 through 5, you will find out that Daniel had a distinguished character. Daniel stood out among the rest. Daniel was different. It says to young people today, don't hang out with gangs because gangs don't have what you really need. 
It says, don't be a victim of pure pressure and pure pressure. Whatever you do, have your own mind. Be a leader yourself. It says to us that we have the ability to stand out if we just use what God has given us. You don't have to duck and hide. You don't, you don't have to sneak and quick. You, you don't have to go about your day uh, uh, surviving and conniving and, and making sure that you accomplish things. When you walk with God, God will give you favor and he will distinguish you among all others. The next thing, not only was Daniel distinguished, Daniel had an excellent spirit. Daniel didn't have a contaminated spirit. He, he, he had joy. The, the songwriter says, I got joy bells ringing down in my heart. Joy bells, joy bells. Let me tell you, when you have an excellent spirit, you're able to carry yourself in a way regardless of what's going on around you. I mean, there's a storm that's brewing. And let me tell you, if you didn't know it, there's a storm out over the ocean, and the storm is headed this way. But if your soul is anchored in Jesus, you can still stay. Whatever you do, Stay in the right spirit. You see, we got God, God has a way of blessing us to be calm in high pressure situations. God has a way to calm our spirit. I told you several times before, sometimes God calms the storm, but many times God calms his child in the midst of the storm. God, God wants to calm his child. God wants to study you. God wants to keep you in the midst of everything that goes on around you. You need to make sure you remain calm. When I, when I first came to Houston, and I was looking to get my bachelor's pass, and you know, the, the, the set was already set. I'm just looking at for stuff all brown. I mean, I want a living room that's brown. I want a bedroom that's brown. And my kitchen decor just had to be brown. I, I, it was already set. I didn't have to go shopping and look for it. And so I went to the flea market over there off West Point. And I bought this glass table. We didn't have those in Mississippi. It was a table. It was made of glass. And it was $89. 1985. It was $89. I mean, what a steal. And I found myself every now and then, every two, three weeks, tightening the screws to make sure that the chairs wouldn't fall over. <laughs> so my, my homeboy, Roosevelt Weeks, the one that's responsible for me coming out this way, Weeks said to me, look, man, there, there are three conditions that can get you some good, solid furniture. And he says, in these three conditions, people are not thinking well. But they want to get out of other stuff. He said there are three things. They must be destitute. They must have had a death in their lives. Or they must have gone through a divorce. We says to me, he says, man, you don't have to go to the flea market and get cheap stuff that doesn't last. You can go to one of these estate sales. Where somebody has died and you can rack up even right. cheaper than right. Right. And you won't have to tighten the screws every time. Uh -huh. He says, not only do you go to an estate, estate, uh, estate sale where somebody has died, then you go and find, look through the paper. At that time, they were putting divorces in the paper. <laughs> he said, look through the paper and see who in your area is getting divorced. And you just show up and go buy stuff. It's always good stuff. And then he says, you find somebody who is destitute, somebody that needs some money and they need it right now. And he said, all you got to do is walk down the street and you got that every day. What he was saying to me is, there are people out there who are going through a storm, and as they're going through a storm, they're not thinking well and you can benefit on it. But let me tell you, child of God, you need to make sure that you calm in the midst of the storm. That's what Daniel, Daniel had an even kill. He had an excellent spirit. He had an excellent spirit. And not only does he have an excellent spirit, when you look further down in the pericope, you will find he was faithful. Uh-oh. There that word is again. 
You see, Daniel didn't go worship his God. <laughs> second, third, and fifth. Dan Daniel didn't worship his God second and fourth. Daniel didn't worship his God every other week or, or three times a year. I, I, I've, I've come to the conclusion, Sister Henry, I, I've come to the conclusion that those who do not flock the sanctuary of God when trying to distract their lives, they want the church to do the most for them. I mean, they demand stuff. I mean, they, they tell you what they need and, and they tell you that I, well, I was sitting, I was sitting, I was sitting and, and, and the woman said, I wanted to have my, 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 my family members still at my church. And I'm sitting in the room. Where's your church? Which church is that? <laughs> you know, sometimes I just lose my mind when folks say stupid stuff. And then I just ask the question, where, what, what church you talking about? And she looked at me like I ought to know the answer. She said, new beginning. I had to just leave it alone because she was in the midst of, of grieving. I said, oh, yeah, okay, well, all right then. And she said, well, and I want his body to lay in state for, for five hours. I said, you can't have that new beginning thing. I said, no, that can't happen there. <laughs> I said, no, that, no we, I, I said, I show up somewhere else and preach the funeral, but that can't happen at the new beginning church. And there is some truth to saying he didn't have a church home. But we want this church to make it happen. And let me tell you, I'm all for church funerals. I think if people didn't have a church home, you need to bring them to the church so the man of God can preach the word of God so somebody's lives can be changed. All right, all right. So somebody can be exposed to a true worship service. We need to welcome those, but not for five hours. I mean, this is five hours laying in a state, then a two-hour funeral. No, it ain't happening at New Beginning Church, Sister Galvan. It can't, we can't, we can't, it can't, can't happen. <laughs> when you have an excellent spirit, God is able to use you to bless other people. God is able to bless you a heap and a plenty if you have the right spirit. Brother Anthony said, he said, man, how do you get Pastor Mark Hartman, pastor of, of, of uh, Sugar Creek Church, to do your ordination 17 years ago? How did you get him to do it? He pastors a mega church, and he is a different color. That's how preachers talk. I said to him, number one, I'm one of God's favorites. Number two, I have the favor of God on my life. I said to him, number three, God is going to make sure that things go well with me because I'm faithful to God and God is faithful to me. Yes, yes. And I said, number four, I just asked him to. <laughs> I, just, I said, okay. Matter of fact, I didn't have to open my mouth. Pastor Walter always said, hey, let's put him on. Bro. I said, okay, no problem. Let me tell you, when you are not in a position to approach somebody to do something for you, God will send somebody else to plead your case on your behalf. Yes, yes, yes. Then the, the same guy, next question was, well, how is it you're so close with, with Pastor John Morgan of the Sage Month Church and, and he answers his cell phone when you call? I said, because I have the favor of God upon my life. And number two, he got my phone number and therefore when he sees me coming, he said, hello Dr. Davis. Come on now. And it's only because of the favor of God. And the, and the other thing is, because I don't like hanging out with folk that ain't going nowhere and don't have anything. I just want to help them get there, but I don't hang out with them. What did I just say? We ought to always support people who are down and out. But they ought not always be your running buddy. The last cousin that borrowed thousand dollars from you is twenty years later. That same cousin won five hundred today. It is the favor of God, and the favor of God comes when you are faithful. The text declares in verses three through five that Daniel was faithful. 
He was faithful to his God. He was faithful to ministering. He was faithful to worshiping. He was faithful. People wonder why their children are not faithful. It's because they don't see you faithful. Let me just share with you. From 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Sunday, if I'm not here, folks wonder. On Wednesday, if I'm not here from 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., folk are wonder. You have to understand that God has a way of blessing those who are faithful. And I'm not talking about faithful when things are going well. I'm not talking about faithful when, when everything is right. I'm not talking about faithful when the pastor says the right thing and you just love him today. I'm talking about faithful in the midst of trouble, faithful in the midst of hard times, faithful in the midst when things are not going your way. We are called to be faithful. And let me just put another right here. Faithful means being on time. What are you talking about being on time, preacher? I'm not talking about driving up in the parking lot. I'm talking about when your bottom is in the seat that you're going to sit in or when you are standing in service. Back home, they were saying like this, make sure you're on your post. Make sure you're on your post. Back home, the choir used to march down the aisle. If you, and they marched down the aisle before church service starts. And I'm telling you, Sister Hughes, they were leaning. And they were saying step by step. Step by step, and they were all dressed in the right colors. And, and they were, when the choir walked in, service began. All right, all right. And you weren't allowed to walk in late. If the, if the choir had on all white that day, and you walked in after 11 o'clock, and you walked in 11 01, you might as well have your seat in the back because the ushers are not even going to usher you up front. In those days, people were faithful. And then when men worked around the church, pastors didn't have to call them and pull them out and, and drag them and convince them. When people were, were obligated to do something, they would tell the pastor, it's done. Mm -hmm. Men and women were faithful. Daniel was faithful. When you look at the text, when you look at the text, uh, Daniel has been one of the, the presidents. Some translations call him the governor. Others call him the president. Daniel was, is one of the three presidents that have been placed over the whole kingdom. Now, there are two other brothers along with Daniel. The Bible doesn't even say they were faithful. But because they were not faithful, they were looking to tear down Daniel. Come on, talk to me. Let me tell you, there's always somebody that's watching the faithful and trying to tear down what the faithful has built up. And when you're faithful and you have an excellent spirit, don't you know folk are watching you? Yeah. And those who live in mediocrity, they're trying, they're trying to tear down what God has placed you in. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel is one of the three presidents mm. over the whole kingdom. So the other brothers get together. They have a meeting. And when they have a meeting, they're going to they say, we can't get it on his work because he's faithful. We can't get him on being late because he's here before time. We, we can't get him on, on not doing the right thing and not saying the right thing in front of the king because Daniel has no errors. Daniel has no faults. So we can't find fault in this man. So what we're going to do, we can get him on his work. Let me tell you, you ought to be guilty. Where people can look at you and say, if we can't get them on anything else, we can get them on their worship. Your worship ought to be so solid. Your worship ought to be so clear. Your worship ought to be so unique. Your worship ought to be so given to God until they can't get you on anything but your worship. All right now. You ought to be a worshiper. You ought to be one who honors God, one who privileged, who counted the privilege to be along with God. And because Daniel had favor with God, God gave him favor with the king. The proverb writer says it like this, God will give you favor with men as you have favor with God. 
The wise writer declares to us that uh, the, the, the heart of the king is in the hand of God. And in the hand of God, the heart of the king is turned like many rivers wherever God wants the heart of the king to go. My question to you is, have you been so faithful until God is turning the heart of the king on your behalf? God is turning the heart of the king on your behalf because you've been faithful, because you have no error, because you have no fault, and because you do not compromise your worship. If something happened, somebody needs you in an emergency, don't get in such a hurry until you go bearing down the road, trying to see what's going on and trying to solve everybody else's problem. Take time to spend time with God. All right. have, you know, have you ever noticed Whenever the ambulance drivers and, and the paramedics pull up on the scene, family members are frantic, friends and neighbors are going crazy, but they just barely, slowly getting their bag out the, out the back of the, the trailer, and they're walking very slowly. They may walk with a fast pace, but they have their mind focused on what they have been radioed in, and they're not going to let the family members rush them to anything, and the family members saying, you're moving too slow. They don't even answer because they are the emergency people. They are the ones who have things under control, and if you get out of their way, they can do their do because they're under control. You have to get to a point when there's an emergency. Mm. We stop and spend time with God and let God teach us how to handle things. Let God teach us how to react. Don't get in such a panic because if you get there early, if you get there quickly, you can't fix the problem without God anyway. Jesus gives us an analogy. Jesus gives us an analogy, and, and he gives us this analogy in John chapter 11. He says that he gets this, this word that his friend Lazarus is dead. All right. Matter of fact, he gets the word before then, and the word says, your friend Lazarus is sick, and his sickness could be unto death. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't get in a hurry. Mm -hmm. He spent four days just telling him ministry. I want to say to you today, in the midst of crisis, continue to minister on behalf of God. In the midst, uh, we, we saw it two weeks ago, standing right here in this pulpit, uh, Pastor Eric Bell, he got some bad news. It was terrible news. It was chronic news. It was terrible news that may not get better, but he came to minister. And I said to him, ministry is therapeutic. Ministry pulls you out of trouble. When you go on and do what you do for God, in the midst of your troubles, God is able to bless you through your troubles. Yes, yes. Daniel kept his custom. So they decided that we, we know what we can do because he's faithful. He's not going to let up on his religion. So they go to the king, and they take everybody that means something to the king. The Bible says they took the step traps. And I said sap trap because they were setting a trap. The word is pronounced sap trap. But they, they, they took the sap trap. They, they took the administrators. They, they took the governors. They, and, and these presidents, they took the counselors. They, they all, the advisors, seen in verses 6 through 8, and they took all of them, and the Bible says they consulted. All right. They didn't really consult. They connived. They connived, and they decided we're going to go to the king, give the king respect, and king, we're going to honor you, king. If any person for the next 30 days is seen worshiping any man or any god other than you, O oh king, we want you to write a decree that you're going to put them in the lion's den. The king said, oh, no problem. And then they told the king, whatever you do, king, make sure that you remind yourself that once you write a decree in the means in the Persian's life, you need to understand that it cannot be removed. All right. It comes to verse number 10, and when it gets to verse number 10, the king knew Daniel, and Daniel knew the writing had been signed. See, first of all, Daniel is a friend of the king. And the king was thinking on promoting Daniel to put Daniel over them and everybody else. The king was looking to put Daniel over the whole kingdom. And they surely didn't want that to happen. 
Like one day I was offered, I was offered a position and I didn't want to be a supervisor. So the question became, do you want Bruce to supervise you? Or do you want to supervise Bruce? I said, I, I take it. <laughs> because you have to get to a point in your life where you understand that this guy is reckless even before he gets in position. Let me tell you, when a joker gets in position and he's already reckless, let me tell you, he's going to sure enough become reckless. <laughs> Mrs. Michelle Obama says it well. She says the presidency doesn't make you who you are. The presidency reveals who you are. We have to understand that if he's already handling his business like a fool, you just giving him license to handle his business even worse. And let me tell you, these great United States of America in 2016 gave a reckless man a license to be a stone fool. I mean a stone fool. And, and he, he didn't waste any time showing you, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do it the way I want to do. And I'm going to benefit whoever I want to benefit. And he said, I told you so. So Daniel knew that the writing had been signed, the decree had been made, and guess what Daniel does? In verse number 10, the Bible says, after Daniel finds out the decree has been written, guess what Daniel does? It says, he went home. It says, he went in his upper room. It says, that he opened his windows toward Jerusalem. It says, Daniel kneeled down on his knees three times that day, the same day that the decree was written, Daniel kneeled down on his knees three times that day, and Daniel prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. Let me tell you, don't change the words. If you've been worshiping God, it doesn't matter what the legislature says, you need to continue to worship God. Right. And check this out, Daniel did not hide his worship. Mm -hmm. Daniel knew that the person that worshiped any God or any man other than King Darius, and that he would be thrown into the den of lions. Mm -hmm. What did Daniel do? He didn't cuss him out. He didn't fight it out. He didn't fuss it out. Daniel did the same thing that Daniel been doing. Daniel went home. Daniel opened his window. Daniel opened his window to his upper room. Daniel got down on his knees. He prayed like he'd been doing from early days. And check this out. He didn't do any extra things to get there. He didn't meld it with them. He didn't poke fun with them. He did the same thing. It says he did the same thing as he normally do in his earlier customs. I think somebody needs to start, start a custom. <laughs> Daniel, Daniel had a custom. Daniel had a routine that he went through. Some of us just need to start a regular custom. If, if, you haven't, if you haven't started the right custom this year for your New Year's resolution, this is a good time, even in the month of February, to go ahead and start a custom to go into your designated spot, calling on your designated God, and make sure that God hears your designated prayer, and do it over and over and over again. All right. All right. Yeah. That's what that did. And then it says, verse number 11, not only did he pray, these men assembled and found Daniel praying. They walked in his house. They went to his room, found Daniel praying and making supplication before God. Let me tell you, folk will go out of their way to, to make sure they call you out. They, they will go out of their way to mess over you. They will go out of your way to make sure, out of their way to make sure you don't get the next promotion. Mm -hmm. King has set the decree. He signed it with with his signature ring. He, he has sealed it with his signet, signet ring. He, he has sealed it with the law. And he has made it a law. He has set the stage. And now they say, oh, king, guess what? Your boy, Daniel, is praying to his God. The Bible says that the king was displeased. The king was heartbroken. The king thought he had messed up. So he tells Daniel, okay, Daniel, you're going to have to go. Verse number 16, he says, so the king gave the command, 
And they brought Daniel and cast him into the lion's den or den of lions. But the king spoke saying, Daniel, your God whom you serve continuously. Daniel worshiped God continuously. He didn't worship God when things were good. He worshiped him continuously. He didn't worship God when things got bad. He worshiped him continuously. The God that you serve continuously. Daniel, he will deliver you. Let me tell you, God has a way of making the enemy worship your God. God has a way of making those who are high on the food chain worship your God. God has a way of making those who are in charge of you worship your God. But you have to make sure you have an excellent spirit. That's right. That's right. You have to make sure you have favor with God. And God can give you favor with the king. Says, says the king declares, your God will rescue you. Your God will deliver you. Then the stone was put on the den. And after the stone was laid over the mouth of the den, the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet of, the, of his lords that for the purpose of Daniel might not be changed. So Daniel's in this line then. A den with lions. He's in a lion's den. And the den with lions has been sealed. The den with lions has been sealed with a stone and has also been sealed with the signet ring and with the signet of the Lord. This den has been sealed. Daniel was in there with lions. When you do your research, you will find out that lions hunt human beings. And when lions hunt animals, they take their teeth and grab them right behind their neck and begin to crush and squeeze them to death by their necks. When he deals with human beings, he catches human beings in the front of their necks and squeeze their trachea until they are dead. This is what Daniel is going into. He's going into a lion's den, and as he goes into this lion's den, he is threatened by lion. But look at what it says. The Bible says that after he was put in the lion's den, the king got up early in the morning. The king went in fasting all night long. Now let me tell you, God has the king. God has Joe Biden fasting on your call. God has Kamala Harris fasting on your call. God calls the king to a moment of rejecting music, his own custom. He shut everything else down. He didn't want any musicians there. He didn't want any, he didn't want any music there. He didn't want any food there. He's pleading Daniel's case by fasting. I just want to let you know that sometimes God will call the attention of the president just to address your situation. Let me tell you, let me tell you, some five years ago, things that are happening on our behalf today would have never happened five years ago. But God has placed a person in charge and he is pleading our case for God on our behalf and don't get fooled. Now, some people say, oh, we just giving poor folks stuff and they just going to become more poor. Let me tell you, just because you got money today, don't think you're going to have money tomorrow. God has a way of blessing the, the head of a nation. He has a way of blessing the sympathetic heart of a man so he can reach him and reach us and be a blessing to us. Also, he didn't get any sleep that night. Who didn't? The king didn't. The king stayed up all night fasting, no music, no, no food. He stayed up all night fasting. But on behalf of Daniel. The Bible says he rose up early in the morning, ran to the lion's den, and verse number 20 says, And when the king came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. Lamenting. Lamenting, a crying voice. He was worried. He was crying. He was crying out. Daniel, he was hoping that Daniel was still alive, and he only wanted no one answer. The king spoke, saying, Daniel, Daniel. Daniel, Daniel, please answer me, Daniel. 
Daniel, servant of the living God. Daniel, has your God, whom you serve continuously, been able to deliver you from the lions? And boy, he was so glad when Daniel answered. In verse number 21, then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. Not only, not only was he still alive, but he was alive and in his right mind. The old folk would say, Lord, I thank you that I'm still alive. And Lord, I thank you that I'm clothed and in a right mind. Let me tell you, it says something when you're in your right mind. There are folk who are still walking around, think they really got things going on, but they're just out of their mind. Right, they think that, but when God keeps you, he's able to keep you in your right mind. You better wake up every morning All right. you go to, before you go to bed tonight. And as you walk around during the day, thanking God, God, thank you for keeping my mind. Yeah. Because I could have lost my mind. Let me tell you, you go through enough. You you suffered through some things, and that you could have lost your mind. You've been through some things that your mind could have escaped you. But the Bible says, when Daniel got out of his mind, then he was in his right mind. His right mind. Let me tell you, you can go through some things today. I mean, there are there are movie stars, there are beauty queens that are losing their mind. Let me tell you, if you're thinking suicide right now, don't do it. Hold your hope. God got something bigger and better for you. Whatever you do, yeah. stick with God and God can bless you. Yeah. Yes, Lord. And if you're thinking about it, get some help. Yeah. If, 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 you, if you're troubling, get some help. I, I, I'm the first one to say, I'm the first one to say, Sister David, that I can't handle everybody's problem. I, I'm the first one to say that I, I don't, I'm not spiritual enough and not, a, not even am I licensed or, or, or got the thing right to do for everybody's mind. But the God I serve knows how to tame the mind. And he has put men and women on planet earth. You better go get you some. You better go pay them a few dollars. You need to go get some help. Go get some help now. Don't wait till in the morning because you cannot make it through the night many times. This little girl had it all in other girls' eyesight. She had had what every little girl looks forward to, a beauty queen. And they say she jumped out of the building, <laughs> killing herself. <laughs> Let me tell you, nothing is that bad. <laughs> and children are committing suicide in the midst of their lives. They're not grown folk doing it because somebody didn't give them enough life. Because they don't think they are pretty enough. God has beautifully and wonderfully made you. It's no secret what you look like. God has put you together. And the Bible teaches that you are beautifully and wondrously made. Great is the hand and works of God. And that I know right well. Yes. Yes. Too many women suffering from low self-esteem because he says, if, if you don't keep me, you would never have anybody. You need to let that joker go 20 years ago, and then you won't make it without me. And then there are men who have low self-esteem because some woman has walked out of their life. And we live in a time where women are walking away and leaving their own children to die. Let me tell you, the God that we serve is able to keep your mind. You want him to keep your mind. Daniel says, long live the king. That means he was in his right mind. He was able to be respectful. It's a note to our young people. Be respectful to everybody you go around. Be respectful to everything that goes on around you because you don't want to burn any bridges. I don't care if folk make you mad. Don't burn the bridge. You may have to cross that bridge to get back to the other side. And stop letting people tell you to burn the bridge. If I was you, I would cuss them out tell them, well, you ain't me. <laughs> If I was you, I wouldn't go back to that job. Tell them you ain't me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember the days in, in, in Jackson, Mississippi, I would wear this monkey suit. It, I, mean, I mean, Burger King got some nice clothing now. But in the summertime and during the holiday, holidays, I would take that long walk about three miles away from my auntie's house, and Burger King had the big old stripes this thick. And the big old stripes ran straight down. It had no, it had no pattern to it. They had yellow stripe, orange stripe, pink stripe, a, a green stripe, and I, I was walking down, up and down the hills in Jackson, Mississippi, going to my job at Burger King. 
and I would get off at 2 o'clock in the morning. And on the way, on the way to Burger King, there was Joker sitting up under the tree saying, Look, brother, you going to work again today? Look, brother, if I was you, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't wear that, little brother. I wanted to tell him, but I was too young to, to protect myself during that time. I wanted to tell all 10 of them that, that the reason why you sitting under the tree is because you wouldn't work at Burger King when you were my age. I mean, they sitting on the tree taunting me, and I'm a young man, 15, 16 years old. I'm trying to make, make a way to buy some school clothes so I wouldn't have to go back home and chop the cotton anymore. People will always taunt you when you're trying to do what's right. But the Bible says that Daniel was in his right mind. He respected the king. He said, long live the king. King live forever. My God sent his angel. The angel shut the lion's mouth. <laughs> so they could not hurt me. I was found innocent. Check it out. I was found innocent before God. I was found innocent before him and also found innocent and I did not do any wrong toward you, my kid. Let me tell you, God has a way of blessing you where, where you can have a testimony. Right, you need a testimony, and your testimony needs to include God. Yeah. Your testimony needs to be one that God brought me out when no one else would let me out. Mm -hmm. God brought me out when they sealed, when they sealed, when they sealed the lines then with a stone. Mm -hmm. God kept me. The Bible says, Daniel testifies that the lines did not hurt him. Yeah, that night, all night, all day, God kept an angel. And the Bible says, my Bible, Bible says that God sent an angel. God sent one angel to tame all the lions. God sent an angel and shut the lion's mouth where they couldn't hurt me. Let me tell you, stop saying, if you dig one ditch, you better dig two. When people tell me they dig in a ditch for me, I said, well, get ready to fall in the ditch you dug for me. Because I'm not falling in one, because God has a way of closing it up before I get there. Right, right. says, God shut the lion's mouth where they could not hurt me because I'm innocent. In other words, I have worshipped God with all I have. And I'm innocent before God because I have not, I have not detoured from what God has assigned me to do. Too many people take a detour from what God has assigned them to do. And what they're doing now is allowing things to fester with them. You can't be blessed if you drop out every time you go to do something. You can't be blessed if you fall out every time somebody says something wrong with you. You can't be blessed if it doesn't go your way. I'm going to take my ball and go home. You have to watch what God is doing in your life. God is motivating you. God is moving in your life. God wants to use this little bitty thing that you're going through right now so God can bless you. Allow him to bless you. Verse number 23, and I'll leave you alone. Now the king was exceedingly glad. God will make those who could have been your enemies rejoice with you. God has a way of, of bringing the king to be exceedingly glad and rejoice with you simply because you have favor with God. Isn't that something? The king who signed the decree, the king that gave the order, the king that, that made sure that, they, that he was locked in the lion's den, he is really, really exceedingly glad that Daniel was not hurt. He said, y'all go take up. He gives the command, take Daniel up out of the lion's den. So they took Daniel up out of the lion's den. And when they took him up out of the lion's den, there was no hurt whatsoever found on him because he believed God. I'm telling you, you need to believe God. Regardless of your lion's den situation, believe God. And I can't deal with the other part of this for Rick and Pete today, but I want to tell you that, that after he got out of the lion's den, the king gave another order to all of those that tried to set Daniel up. Throw them in the lion's den. Throw their families in the lion's den. And the Bible says the lions ripped them up, their children up, and their parents and their, and their wives up before they hit the bottom of the den. God has a way. 
of making sure that you can be blessed of God even in the midst of the lion's den. Let me tell you, uh, Daniel couldn't fight, but the lions couldn't fight because God gave him favor in the lion's den. Let me tell you, when you don't fight, God can give you favor. When you don't put up a fight, when you don't cuss them out, when you don't move on, God will make a way out of no way for you. He did it over 2,000 years ago. With Jesus the Christ, he died on Calvary's hill. They killed him on Calvary. Many men killed my Lord and my God. They killed him on Calvary. They laid him in a barber tomb. They put my rock in the den. They put my rock on top of rock. They sealed it with the rock. But out of that third day morning, Jesus the Christ rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. Jesus rose. You got to believe God. Believe what God has said. And believe what God has already done. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You got to come to Jesus. Yes, if you are. You, you, you're suffering right now. Of the lion den experience. Yes. Just can't get it right. I tried, preacher. I tried to get it right. I just can't get it right. I recommend Jesus. Won't you try him? The door is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. Come. Come on to Jesus. Believe God. He will rescue you. He will set you free. The door is open. Will you come? If you haven't tried Jesus, just invite him in today. And you can do that by just repeating this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. You received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You're on your way to heaven. Regardless of what den you go through, God can give you the victory. If there's others of you who don't have a church home or in between church homes, I recommend the New Beginning Church. But Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. If you're listening to us by broadcast, inbox us and let us know that you want to join the New Beginning Church. We'll be glad to welcome you to this family of faith. If you've received Jesus Christ doing this message, let us know that, that we can celebrate with you and welcome you to the family of faith. If you struggle with sin or struggle with this lion's den situation, let us know so we can pray with you and pray for you. Thank you so much for joining us in this broadcast. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is offering time. It's time to give. Give to the Lord. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. If you need an envelope, please, please raise your hand. Please raise your hand. For those of you who are wanting to give online, you can do so by giving to our Zelle account. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. If you want to mail in your, your tithes, offering in your sacrificial gifts, you can do so by mailing to P.O. Box. 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459. That's P.O. Box 503 Missouri City, Texas 77459. Father God, we thank you for this privilege, this honor, 
We thank you for who you are, for what you do. We thank you for another chance to pray, to receive, and to give. We ask you to bless every giver. We pray, Father God, that you bless them with an increase and more income. We pray, Father God, that you bless them with favor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. As this time to stand for the first impressions from the rear to the front, bring forth the Lord's tithe offering as I take a gift. Sunday school, old woman would walk by and say, huh, put this in your pocket. And don't tell anybody. Put this in your pocket. Don't tell anybody. People will always give to young people who are going somewhere, who are doing some things, and who have an excellent spirit. Thank you, Sophia, for, for um, your contribution to the world in which we live. Amen. Uh, Dr. Emma Allen is having a job fair, COVID testing, food drive, and health screening at the Hiram Clark Municipal uh, Service Center. It's at 3810 West Fuquay Street in Houston. I want you to come by, take a picture of this flyer, and uh, if you're looking for a job, you need health screening, or if you need food, or a COVID test, she's giving it. And it is uh, February, Saturday, February 26th from 10 to 2. That's Dr. 
Alma Allen, who is the state representative for her, for us right here in this, this district, amen? So we wanna make sure that, that you have opportunities that are given unto you, amen? During our prayer time, as we pray out now, we want to remember the Westfield and West families. We want to remember uh, Gregory Tillman, Stella Collins, uh, Karen Birchfield, uh, Cheryl York, nephew passed away, so we want to lift that family. Uh, Crystal Raglan, we want to lift that family in healing, and Crystal Raglan in healing, and Charles Cameron, we want to lift those as uh, we confront God on their behalf. Amen. Why don't we stand to be dismissed? Father God, that as we go from this point to the next, this week, Father God, that you will bless us. And as you bless us, Father God, even if we're in a lion's den situation, bless our conditions. Give us hope. Give us strength. Those who are on the verge of suicide, we ask you to hold the reins of their minds. Keep them focused. Keep them in your will. Bless them to get help and bless them, Father God, to be about your business. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless our church with spiritual growth, physical growth, financial growth. Bless us, Father God, that we will walk with you and always look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Bless us to believe you, God, even in a blind end situation. Bless us to trust you as we go through our day-to-day -day activities. And bless us, Father God, to always give you glory, all the honor and all the praise. Lord, we ask you to stop our enemies from hurting us, from beating us, from confusing us, from, dis from distracting us, and detouring us. Bless us to stand strong and very courageous against the wiles of the devil. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power. Unto him be glory. Unto him be dominion. Until we come again, let us sing together. Amen. God bless you. Our mission and vision. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, in I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12, 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.